Hi everybody, this is Jeremy with the Practical IT Channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at Linus. Now yes, you may have noticed this is a topic I've covered before, but there's no time like the present to do an update and go over a few more details of what Linus can do and how it can make your system more secure. Let's get started. All right, we're at the home page for Sysify, which is the company behind Linus. And I wanted to point out just a couple of things on their website. First, it goes into a description of what Linus is. As we've talked about in previous videos, Linus is for auditing, system hardening, and compliance testing. Linus by itself does not make your system more secure. Linus gives you a sort of battle plan so that you can make your system more secure. It does tests, and then you have to act on those test results so that your system in turn becomes more secure. Supported operating systems, basically anything that is Unix or Unix-like. It'll run on anything from FreeBSD to Linux to Mac OS to Solaris and Unix from various other vendors like IBM and HP. Also worth pointing out is that Linus scanning is modular. You can add plugins to it. And so it goes through the audit steps, initialization, performing basic checks, determine operating system and tools, search for available components, check for latest Linus version, run plugins, run security tests, by category, perform execution of any custom tests, and display a report. So your results are also going to be stored in a log file, which you can access later. If you are using a Unix type system in an enterprise environment, you might consider Linus Enterprise. I have not used this offering, but the cost is fairly reasonable it's about $3 a month per system, and it gives you access to additional reporting and other functionality that's not available in the freely available version. So one last thing I'm going to point out is that typically when I am using Linus for a demo, I am using it without going through much configuration. You do have the option of disabling or whitelisting certain tests that may not apply to your specific system. This is important so that when you run Linus in the future, after you've established a baseline, for subsequent runs, you don't keep seeing the same warnings and other information that doesn't apply to the specific use of your system. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the system we're going to be working with. So I've got a fresh copy of Ubuntu Server 20.04 LTS installed in Proxmox, and I am actually connected to it via SSH. As you can see from the screen, all of the updates have already been run. I've jumped back to the website. I want to show you one other thing before we really dig into this. Under installation, there are several ways that you can install Linus. So if you are brand new to Linus, they suggest going to the Get Started Guide. And for the sake of the video, let's go ahead and do that. So of course, your first step is download an installation. We're going to use Git, which is one of the quickest and easiest ways to do this. And so it's recommending that we go to user local and then clone Linus. So let's jump back over to the terminal. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna say git clone. Okay, so right away, 
since we're in user local, could not create work tree directory Linus permission denied. So we're going to use sudo to accomplish that. And we've cloned Linus. We come in here, we've got all of our files that come with Linus. If we run dot slash Linus, it's going to give us a list of all of the flags that are available. And as you can see, you can audit the system. You can do a remote audit or you can audit a Docker file. There are different modes for Linus. You could do a pen test, which is again, non-privileged and shows points of interest for pen testing. Or you could do a forensic analysis on a running system. We're going to go ahead and clear this. Jump back to the website one more time. And the command they suggest to start with is Linus audit system. So we'll copy that and we're going to do sudo Linus audit system and it will push through the audit and this will take just a moment or two. So I'm going to jump out for a moment and I'll be back with as it's finished. Alrighty, so we have made it through our line of scan on this fresh system. Our baseline hardening index is a 64. Now, if we go up to the top of the results. Okay, so like I said, this is a fresh install. The only thing I did differently in the install of this system, which in part is what gave us the 64 score is I put root, home, var, and boot all on separate partitions, which is something that typically Linus will report as a potential security risk if you don't do that. So I know by default, a lot of Linux distributions just dump everything on the root partition and just let you run with it. But taking a little extra time during install can help boost your hardening index. All right, so as far as results, the warning right off the bat is because the firewall is existent, but it is not enabled. There are no rules active. So that's an easy fix. Again, this is a fresh install done just prior to the start of recording this video. So there are a few things that could be disabled for the system because it is for a home lab and not a production environment. Setting a password for Grub. It's a VM, it's a home lab that can be skipped in the future. Hardening system services is something I'll look into. Consider explicit disabling of core dumps. Again, for my purpose, that is not something I necessarily want to do in the future. PAM configuration, yes, that's something to work on. Configure password hashing rounds, yes, that again is something to work on. Install a PAM module for password strength testing, sure, that's a good idea. And a lot of these are the same types of things. Set expiration dates for all passwords, minimum password age, maximum password age, some UMask, which it says could be more strict. And temp was one that I did not put on a separate file system. So if I were to do this again, that's something I would consider. Consider disabling unused kernel modules, good idea. USB storage, Again, this is a VM and specifically it's a VM on a server virtualization platform, Proxmox VE. So yes, in this case, this is something that I could very well do. Uh, DNS configuration, uh, again, 
installing some packages to help things consider hardening SSH. Again, I have not tweaked any settings yet. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tests related to SSH. So that would be a low hanging fruit area to bump up the hardening index. All right, enable logging to an external logging host in a production environment. Yes, for my purposes, again, not something that is a high priority and I would probably consider disabling this test. Deleted files, uh, legal banners, Again, for a home system, for a home lab system, probably something you're not going to want to worry about or need to worry about, especially if you're not opening access to the system outside of your local network. If you were to have some sort of service that's accessible outside your home network, yes, you would absolutely want to hammer on these legal banners. Enable accounting some audit items here, file system integrity tools, talks about some permission things and permission of home directories and installing a malware scanner. So again, given what we've got here, especially since 10 of those tests are related to SSH, it would be fairly easy to go from a 64 from a base install to, you know, high 70s, low 80s for a hardening index. Again, Linus does not do this for you, and you do need to take action to make these things happen. I do have a video available on hardening SSH, which I'll link to up at the top, and I may very well cover doing this using Ansible in the future. So it would be great if you've got a set of tests that you know you need to improve from their default install settings to be able to build an Ansible script, have that script make the changes and make it in a consistent way across any new system that you spin up. In a future video, we may very well take a look at doing just that. Building that Ansible script out, running it against a system, and then rerunning the Linus scan to see what impact the Ansible script had on the hardening index. All right, I've thrown a bunch of information at you in a fairly short amount of time. I think this is a good place to wrap things up. If you have not done so already, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, and feel free to leave comments down below. I'm always interested in hearing from the community as we start building this channel bigger and better than ever before. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Again, this is Jeremy from the Practical IT channel. Thanks for watching. Happy computing. Have a great day and stay safe out there. I'll see you in the next video.